To ensure flight safety and promptly detect any deviations in the flight path, you can perform a check by monitoring the distance between the drone and the boundary displayed on the controller interface when the drone enters the initial route. For instance, while editing the route, if widen overall margin is set to zero, it means that when the drone carries out the operation, the actual distance between the route and the boundary is approximately 2.5 meters. If there is a significant deviation in either the left-right or front-back distance, it is important to assess whether the execution of the land plot is experiencing an overall offset. In such cases, it is necessary to promptly interrupt the operation and rectify the offset, in order to prevent the drone from exceeding the operational boundary. When executing the route, if obstacles are encountered, return points 1 and 2 should be selected according to the shape, size, and location of the obstacles. If there is a single obstacle, it can be manually bypassed. During the manual bypass, the radar will continuously show the position of the obstacle, allowing the drone's spatial position in relation to the obstacle to be determined. When it indicates that the obstacle is located at the lower portion of the radar ball, the FPV camera can be used to verify if the obstacle has been successfully bypassed. After bypassing the obstacle, choose return point 1. However, if the obstacle is continuous, choose return point 2 to bypass the entire patch of obstacle. When the obstacles have a continuous irregular shape, you can adjust the flight route to the point where you need to switch to the next route and select return point 2. In summary, if there is a single obstacle, choose return point 1. If there are continuous obstacles spanning two flight paths, choose return point 2. When the drone needs to return, it must assess the return path for obstacles. The return path should be obstacle-free, and during landing, it should prioritize avoiding people, cars, trees, wires, and seek a relatively flat ground. In case the designated area does not meet the takeoff and landing requirements, reset the RTH point in the settings in the upper right corner of the operation interface before initiating the return path. In the event of an emergency during RTH, the return flight can be cancelled by long pressing the RTH button for two seconds. It is important to note that when the drone returns to its home point, it follows a 3-meter in and 3-meter out protocol. When the drone is within 3 meters of the home point, it will initiate the landing process. If it is 3 meters away, it will ascend to the connection routing altitude, then proceed to the return point for a vertical landing. Attention should be paid to the landing position during a close distance return, and manual landing is recommended. When manually returning the drone, it is crucial to ensure that it takes off and lands in a flat and open area. Additionally, when the drone is at a considerable distance, you should use your eyes and the FPV camera to fly at home. After retracting the drone back to the visual range through the first perspective, adjust the nose direction and maintain the rear-facing landing. If the drone returns to the takeoff and landing point within the visual range, the drone can be retracted rear-facing by adjusting the direction of the nose. It is important to note that throughout the return operation, the obstacle avoidance radar must remain activated. After landing, it is important to prioritize changing the battery before adding any liquid or fertilizer. Pay close attention to prevent any liquid or fertilizer from splashing onto the power distribution board. In the event of liquid fertilizer spilling on the battery, promptly remove it. Once the loading is complete, flight operations should be conducted only after ground crews and onlookers have safely moved away from the drone.